talk about the process I went through to apply for and come to Korea to work through GOE. So let's get started. So there are some points that I'm going to touch today about applying to work for GOE. It is the initial application, the other paperwork you need for visas and whatnot, and then maybe just stuff that you need to fly, like COVID related things. And if we have enough time, I'll talk about arrival and orientation. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my gosh, sorry. Um, so, your initial application. I applied through Korea, Korean Horizons. Uh, it's just koreanhorizons.com. I'll put the link in my little video bio. And then I just apply with the form that's on their website. You can do that or send a resume to email provided. They have a like how to apply section of their website and it tells you all the stages of getting into the public school system in Korea if that's what you're looking for. So it does tell you everything you need to know but I will still go over some of it in my video. <laughs> so after you send this off you will wait a few days and see if somebody will contact you. So please make sure you check your spam folder. I know my stuff gets lost a lot that way, but yeah. But don't worry, they will get back to you. So you can apply for EPIC, GEPIC, or GOE. I did GOE and that's what we're going to talk about today. I have worked for EPIC before, but this is not the process I want to talk about, even though they are similar. So. When you hear back from them, you will do a formal application for whichever program they talk to you about applying for. So mine was GOE. So in my application form, I had to include like a passport photo, my name, birthday, address, all the schools I've attended, my work history, all that good stuff. But they also ask you where you might want to live in the province. So when you're in GOE, you're in, um, let's see, Gyeongsangnam. So yeah, there's a lot of like uh, rural areas, but there's also a lot of cities too. I'm currently in Yongsan and it's kind of like, it's a city, it's more of a city than I lived in before in Korea but it's not like overly crowded and crazy and stuff. So it's really relaxed, I think. And you have to have a scan of your passport. You have to have a scan of your bachelor's degree. Uh, your bachelor's can be like in anything. It doesn't matter, but you might need a certificate for TEFL or TESOL. So it has to be at least 100 hours and you might want to scan that as well. So then you also need to reference letters. You have to scan them and send them in. But when you get your letter of recommendations, your reference letters, please make sure that the original copy is signed by hand by the person writing it. You will need this official hand signed copy to bring here when it's time to leave. So once you have those, scan them and add them to your application. Once they look at your application, they will see if you can get an interview with the program. So this is kind of quick. Once you get everything you need, the process is really fast, I believe. So you will have your interview. It will be on Skype. Before you have your interview, your coordinator or recruiter, he will uh, like FaceTime you or Skype. Yeah, we use Skype but you will Skype with him a few times throughout this process. And this time is really important because he will help discuss with you questions you might have to answer in your interview. So I will not list them in this video because that is not for me to say, but it's not very difficult. And you just basically have to talk about how you will handle different situations and what you expect and how you can manage yourself while in Korea. So it's not too bad. It's, uh, you know, if you're really passionate about coming here and coming to teach, I think you'll do it excellently. Anyways, 
The interview was not very long. It can be like half an hour or so, but mine was shorter than that. It's, they basically go over like your application with you and ask you some of those questions that you might review beforehand and just talk about how you are like in your work and how you will be in your work. Anyways, let's talk about after your interview. So it will take maybe two or three days to hear back about your interview. They will say if they want to offer you a job or not, your recruiter will tell you if they want to send an offer. So with this offer, you will see your contract. And if you accept it, you will start your visa process. Part of your visa process will be many, 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 many documents. You will need the copies of your two recommendation letters. You will need to have passport photos taken to send in. I think I sent in three or four. You have to have an FBI background check that's passed and you have to have it apostled. You also have to have a copy of your degree apostled. So, sorry. The, you have like, look at your local government, like your, or for your state, for the regulations on getting your documents apostled. I'm not sure if it's the same in each state, so I had to look mine up for Kentucky. Uh, you have to have your signed application or contract, and then you have to have your application for the actual visa, and $45. Whew. <laughs> and also copies of your transcripts from your colleges. I had to maybe send two for each college. So I had sent four total. And then a scan of your passport, and then you'll also have two more forms that your recruiter will send you, which are like a a health report kind of deal, like basically you check off symptoms that may or may not be COVID related, and then a form saying that you're going to self-quarantine when you arrive in Korea. You also have to submit a pay prepaid envelope that's self-addressed. So this way they can send you your visa when it's ready. And your passport. So, some places I've heard you have to bring these in in person to apply for your visa. But I lived all the way in Kentucky. My consulate was up in Chicago. So I was able to send mine in by mail, thankfully. And it took about two weeks due to COVID. It's a little bit faster during normal times, but please give it some time. Do not expect it within a few days unless like you get really lucky maybe. So yeah. Once you receive your visa, you can then book your flight, which is kind of the easiest part to me, but it will be a little pricey depending on where you live and how close to your leaving date you are. So, but you will be asked to arrive on a certain day because there may be a few of you starting around the same time. So that's like makes it a little bit more difficult for getting the flight, but it's not too bad. I promise. About the flights, we have COVID right now, of course. So you will need a negative PCR test within 72 hours of your flight. Please once you check with whoever you're flying with uh, their regulations for COVID, because I heard it varies from flight to flight. Delta, I needed the negative PCR test within 72 hours and per Korean rules. And you have to wear a mask at all times and stuff like that but honestly the flight was wonderful it was so quiet it was so empty i loved it um you will be asked to fill out a form about quarantining for two weeks so i'm not sure if incoming teachers can apply for exemption i know certain people can right now but uh, i'm really not sure about incoming teachers if you can apply for exemption that would be great if you cannot you will have to quarantine for two weeks in a facility uh, your recruiter will send you a link of an option of where to stay I think this is the best way to do it because you know for a fact it is clean is well taken care of and they have a meal plan that you can select and you can also choose the size of the room you want to stay in it's at minimum a little over a thousand dollars so it's a little pricey but you are getting three meals a day, and they do ask about your dietary needs if you have any. So you have to have this to fill out. 
on ooh, for your visa and your flight but yeah i have another few minutes i guess it's been about 10 so let's go ahead and talk about arrival and orientation so arrival was all right because you don't have to do orientation right away with GLE because of the quarantine. You will have to like come into the airport. You will have your passport and your PCR test looked at. They will take your temperature. Do not wear a jacket on the plane and coming off. Do not wear a jacket. You will be hot. And if you have a fever due to just being hot from the plane and stuff, you will have to sit and wait for a few hours until your temperature goes down. And then they might even test you for COVID. So <laughs> to avoid that, don't wear a jacket, don't wear big sweaters. Try to be like cool. Anyways, they will check all of your stuff and then they will give you some papers. You should have everything filled out online um, before then. I think they started something new about that. I'm not 100% because they started that after I arrived, but please look into it. There are some quarantine groups on Facebook. I will link them below. And then you will have to go through different like stations before leaving the airport. It's mostly checking your papers that you filled out, checking your temperature, checking your symptoms. It can be kind of slow depending on how many people you flew with. My plane was super empty. I think I took maybe half an hour to get through there. It wasn't much at all. Before you totally exit that area, there are like, there's a little space where you can exchange money. So if you come in time to exchange money, I recommend doing it there, like big time. Uh, some people also pick up pre-ordered cell phone SIM cards. Uh, a lot of people did this, I didn't. I have T-Mobile my Magenta plan and I'm able to just use my phone anywhere. It's really slow but it works until you actually get a Korean cell phone. Anyway, after that, you will be taken out. They will ask you if you want to use like what kind of taxi to use. Uh, depends on the price, of course. And you tell them your quarantine address and then they will take you out, take your bags, take you to your quarantine place and you're there for two weeks. All right, then after that, you and if other teachers came, you and those teachers will be picked up by a van provided by GLE, and they will take you down to Changwon. I believe it was, I think that's where we went. They will take you there, you will stay in a hotel for the night because it's a long trip. And the next day you will go to the Office of Education. You will sign some papers, you'll give them the other copy of your contract and meet your co-teacher or handler. After all that, it's really fast, uh, especially with COVID, it takes like, 15 minutes or so, then you leave with your co-teacher. They will take you to your school. They will show you your apartment and sometimes they'll help you get stuff that you need because you know, you haven't been there and you've been stuck in the room for two weeks. No official orientation during this time. You will be doing everything online. Um, I didn't do mine until July and I got here in like I got here in April, but I started officially in May. So that's when I did my training was last month. A bunch of us did it at the same time. So yeah, it's a lot of videos and then you just make notes about the videos and tell them what you learned and how they can improve or not improve, stuff like that. It's not that bad. So yeah, if you have any questions, about joining through GOE to teach in Korea, please let me know. I know sometimes my train of thought just kind of goes and yeah, it gets a little crazy, but I try to remember the best I can, even though it's been a few months. But yeah, if you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Until next time, goodbye.